Here comes Kyle Betts, chance for a two and one if they hurry. Betts walks up, stops right face off circle. Quick shot was blocked as he fanned on his shot, but following the play to try and get another shot away was the Kings defenseman as Mullen's shot is stopped by the goaltender as well. Another shot goes wide, rebound chance, they score! A shot and a rebound, classic hockey goal, and jumping on top of that rebound, who else? Cam Donaldson gets his 11th goal of the season. Puck is dropped in the second period. Tristan Mullen got control and backhanded the puck in deep. Lots of speed as he races after it on the forecheck. In the corner, the Centennials will regain control, but now they lose it. Here's Mullen. High slot, he scores! 13 seconds into the second period. A turnover ends up in the back of the Centennials net. Own Liam Lawson with the puck right up the middle of the ice. Lawson splits two defenders, now heads to the left wing boards, and he scores! He just threw that puck at the net. I think it deflected off the stick of Johnny Evans, I believe that is. And the puck was deflected in. No, that's Cam Donaldson. He's got another goal. And the Kings have cut it down to 5-3 to three with 10.41 left in the game. Cam Donaldson back left point for Steen. Back for Donaldson, left wing face off circle, walking in, down low, jam play at the side, still trying to knock that puck in, and they weren't able to do so. Donaldson again, down low for Evans, tip play, scores! Johnny Evans is able to deflect that puck into the net, 2.31 left in the game. It is now 6-4, as Johnny Evans has goals in three straight games. A power play goal has cut it down to 6-4. Welcome back to Merritt, where I'm joined alongside now by Kings assistant coach Brock Sawyer following a 6-3 or 6-4 Merritt win over the Kings. And coach, uh, that was a really fast-paced game, almost 100 shots between the two teams. Uh, really a relentless attack by the Merritt Centennials, seemingly right from puck drop. And they were just able to get some goals in the second period and were able to hold you guys off until late in the game. No, for sure. I mean, you mentioned uh, 100 shots and uh, that's what you're going to get in a little uh, band box of an arena like this. But uh, no, I mean, we have to be better. Obviously, it wasn't uh, a great second period, and they capitalized on a lot of opportunities and, um, you know, obviously played the bounces here in their home ice and took advantage of it. So um, don't know where things went wrong from last night to tonight, but uh, thought we were a little too cool for school and um, thought it was going to be easy. And, and obviously, it's uh, when you prepare to play like that, you're not going to get... Uh, you know, your best effort, and that's what happened here tonight. I feel like your team was able to weather that storm early in the period as you faced almost as many shots in the first period alone as your team did in the entire game last night. It was 1-1 after the first period. You guys opened the scoring as well, so your team was able to weather that storm early, but it just seemed like in the second period after you guys got that early goal, something just changed for the Centennials, and they were able to get some quick ones. Well, it's just what happens when you get outworked in 20. Um, you know, we, we made it our goal this period, this uh, this trip to not uh, lose a period, and obviously they uh, took it to us in the second, and we really had no answer. Obviously came out and got one quick, but uh, we, we turned the puck over too much again, and we, we were too quick to, to dump pucks and, uh, and not take advantage of the ice that was given. I mean, we turned down some shots, and in a rink like this where it looks like a, it, it's probably, I don't know, 170 by 80 maybe, if, if that. So, um, I mean, in a tight building like this where – a shot from the blue line is like a shot from the top of the circles at the half. It's uh, you can't turn down any shots, and that's why you see them at 100. But um, we didn't we didn't pay the price to win. That's the bottom line. Uh, it was a tough night to net for Mitch Adamic. I thought uh, Matteo Pillar Chow making his BCHL debut quite quite played quite well in relief. Uh, looks like he finished uh, the game with uh, seven 16 saves against, and uh, for a guy playing his first career game, was uh, kind of thrown to the fire here, but played quite well. No, for sure. I mean, obviously, a tough night for Mitch. It's uh, it's a tough building to play, and obviously you don't know the bounces, and they took advantage of them. I think uh, one of the guys who was uh, sitting in the stands said, I think the last one kind of they dumped it in, and he was kind of out of position, and it went off him and in. But, I mean, things happen quick in a small building with lively boards, and, um, yeah, it's uh, it's one he'll like to have back for sure. But, I mean, hey, we didn't really play well in front of him. I mean, that's the bottom line. We we lost too many one-on-one uh, -on -one battles and, and didn't pick up sticks in front of the net. And that was our main focus today was just pick up sticks and, and neutralize body and sticks in front of the net. And um, I mean, you know, a, a tough night for him, but we didn't really help him out. He didn't really have much in front of him. So, um, you know, definitely one we got to rebound and, and get him going again tomorrow, and, and he'll be back in to – to shut the door and give us another opportunity to win. And, yeah, you mentioned Mateo there coming in and, and getting his first taste. He, uh, no, he kicked well. Obviously had a good camp with us and, um, you know, got an exhibition game and that uh, – 
debacle we had there in Gibson's against uh, Chilliwack. But no, give him credit. Came in and played well, made some saves, and um, you know, good, good first experience for him. It, uh, it's uh, it's a tough building to play in, but uh, no, he he did real well. Uh, a positive, I know you don't want to say it's too little too late, but those last few minutes, I know your team was on the power play, had the extra attacker as well, but really you guys controlled play for probably the last four minutes of that game and obviously were able to get a goal to get it closer. But, uh, the, I mean, I guess that's sort of one positive you can move into tomorrow's game is that your team really didn't quit uh, throughout the game, and especially at the end when you were able to get one back. Well, I hope there's no quit in our squad. I mean, it's uh, it's the feeding thing when you're, when you do quit and you give up, but um, no, I mean, you know, give our guys credit. They battle right to the last, you know, the final buzzer, and um, other than not playing a full 60 minutes, there, there are a lot of positives to take from this game. I mean, you do mention we score four goals, and um, normally that's good enough to win in this league, but uh, no, it's, you know, it, it's over with now, and we get on the bus and start preparing for tomorrow. It's going to be another another tough game in a small building, and, um, you know, where things happen quick, and you you got a team who just... Uh, you know, is coming off a big win against uh, a, a division rival for us in Alberni, and um, we got to be ready to play. So it's uh, it's a tough night. It's a it's a tough trip, but hey, it's uh, you know there's there's still two points up for grabs, and we can go home with with uh, four of six. It's uh, it's not that bad, but um, no, we'll we'll focus on that. Put this behind us here and and move forward and get ready to play tomorrow. Coach, thanks for this, and we'll talk to you after the game tomorrow with Prince George. Yep, thank you very much.